hello guys welcome back again okay so in this video we will see a problem on a rectangular column footing we will design the entire footing and provide all the necessary checks we will also provide the development length check as well as the check for load transfer so let's go through the problem first and let's see the rectangular column 275 mm by 450 mm is subjected to an ultimate load of 900 kilo newton design an isolated footing for column so we have to design an isolated footing and um, most probably a rectangular footing and uh, the safe bearing capacity of the soil given to us is 210 kilo newton per meter square and the grade of concrete we that we have to use is m25 and fe415 steel so before we start off with the problem uh, i have written down the design constant for fe415 steel xc max is 0.48d and the uh, maximum limiting moment is 0.138 fck bd square okay so let's start now the very first step would be to calculate the load acting on the footing so there will be two types of load the imposed load that right, which is coming down from the column and the second thing would be the self weight which is the actual weight of the footing so the ultimate load which is 900 kilo newton but we don't have to take the 900 kilo newton we have to divide it by 1.5 because this is the ultimate load we have to divide it by partial safety factor to get the working load so the working load is 600 kilo newton now the self weight will be 10 percent of the imposed load so 10 percent of 600 kilo newton is 60 kilo newton so if we add these two we will get total working load is equal to 660 kilo newton once we get the total load on the footing we can calculate the size of the footing so the second step would be size of footing now it will be the load on the footing divided by the safe bearing capacity of the soil which is given in the problem so 660 kilo newton divided by 210 kilo newton per meter square so that will be 3.14 meter square now once you get the area you can calculate the size of the footing that is the length and the breadth of the footing as this is the i'm saying length and breadth because i'm assuming it to be a rectangular footing so in our case the l by b ratio of the column is 450 by 275 which is 1.63 so i'm assuming the same uh, l by b ratio for the footing also so my l value of the footing will be 1.63 times b so the area is l multiplied by b l is 1.63 b times b so if i put all the values here my value of b would be 1.38 meter and the value of l will be 1.63 multiplied by 1.38 which is 1.91 meter so the actual footing would look something like this this is 1380 mm and the length is 1910 mm and the column is in the center which is 450 mm here and 275 mm here okay that's all and you can also calculate the offsets here from the face of the column to the edge of the footing which is 730 mm on this side and 730 mm on this side and 552.5 mm on this side and 552.5 mm on this side this will be useful while calculating the 
area of the shaded portion in two way shear and one way shear. Now the third step is to calculate the net upward pressure or the reaction from the soil or the uplift pressure whatever you want to call it. Net upward pressure. It is denoted by W which is the ultimate load. Please note this is the ultimate load and in the previous case while calculating, calculating the size of the footing it was the working load. So your ultimate load which is given in the problem that is 900 kilo Newton and which is divided by the gross area provided of the entire footing so which is 6 900 kilo Newton divided by 1.91 is the length and the 1.38 breadth so if you solve this you'll get the net upper pressure as 341.45 kilo Newton per meter square once you do, do this the next step would be to calculate the bending moment acting on the slab Now as you all know the bending moment will be just at the edge of the at the face of the column and uh, this entire portion would be subjected to the bending moment. Guys I have uh, already discussed all the cases that is the bending moment case the two way shear case and the one way shear case in my previous video I highly recommend you to please watch that video first before you start solving this problem and um, I hope you will understand that and after watching that video you will understand this problem much better so this portion would be subjected to the bending moment and we will assuming it as a cantilever slab so the total load on this slab would be W kN per meter square W is nothing but your net upward pressure which we calculated in the previous step so the moment will be mx is equal to w lx square by 2 multiplied by bf and for y direction it will be w ly square by 2 multiplied by lf Now let us see what is LX and LY. So for the shorter side, this portion will be LX. And similarly for the longer side, it will be LY. So the value of LX will be B minus B by 2. This was B, that is the width of the footing. And I deducted the width of the column which was small b and I divided it by 2 to get the values on each side. So this was the okay yeah that is b minus b by 2. So which is So in our case this is the width of the footing so I'll put one B as 1380 minus B is the column width that is 275 mm divided by 2 which is 552.5 now let's put all the values in the equation mx and my so mx will be w that is 341.45 multiplied by LX is I'll, this was in mm so I'll take it in millimeters square multiplied by the width of the footing is 1.38 upon 2 which is 
71.92 kN meter and MY will be 341.45 multiplied by now what, let's see what is LY LY will be 1910 I'll show you in this diagram 1910 this is the total length minus 730 mm sorry minus 450 mm 1910 minus 450 mm this part so this part remains I'll divide this by 2 we get only this part so that is um, 1910 minus 450 mm upon 2 which is 730 mm so I'll put all this value here so 0 0.73 I'll take it in meters square multiplied by the length of the footing is 1.91 upon 2 which is 173.79 kilonewton meter so if you compare these two values of moment the value of my is greater than mx so for design purposes we'll use the value my which is 173.79 mm a kilonewton meter so my will be md that is a design moment which is 173.79 kilonewton meter so to calculate the depth from bending moment we have to equate the design moment to the uh, limiting moment which is 0.138 fck bd square so 0.138 fck is 25 multiplied by uh, width that is 1.91 in y direction multiplied by d square and we will equate it with the design moment so the value of d is 162.4 mm now you have to assume an effective depth greater than this so most probably um, if you take any value uh, below 450 mm your footing may fail so according to my experience and what i have seen in problems uh, you have to assume uh, the overall depth as 600 mm or more so that your footing is safe in two way shear as well as in one way shear so in this case i'm assuming in the total uh, depth or the overall depth as uh, 500 mm sorry I'll assume it as 600 mm now you have to calculate the effective depth in x direction and effective depth in y direction so <clears throat> let's assume a diameter of bars let's say we, we can provide 12 mm bars on both the directions so the value of dx will be 600 mm minus 6 mm that is half the diameter of the bar which will be 544 mm and dy will be 544 mm minus the entire diameter of the bar which is uh, 544 minus 12 mm which will be 532 mm so it actually looks like this this is the bottom bar and this is the top bar and this is the effective cover so this is the clear cover and up to this point it is dx and up to this point it is dy so initially from that overall depth which was up to this point I deducted half the distance from the bar sorry for the uh, effective depth I uh, deducted half the diameter of the bar which was this portion and uh, for calculating the effective depth for y direction I deducted half from this and half from this which was actually 12 mm okay so that's all with the effective depth once you get the effective depths you can also calculate the area of steel now for calculating the area of steel we will naturally use the maximum bending moment so your AST will be 0.5 FCK upon FY 1 minus under root of 1 minus 4.6 M upon FCK BD square into a BD this is the same formula which we use for design of slabs so if I plug in all the values we can get the value of tension steel 0.5 into FCK which is um, 25 upon F1 415 steel FE 415 steel minus 1 minus under root of 1 minus 4.6 into 173.79 into 10 raised to 6 
upon FCK which is 25 multiplied by width is 1000 just what we did in slabs into the effective depth which is 532 mm square into 1000 into 532 So after solving this we get uh, the area of steel is 932.03 mm square. Now the spacing of the reinforcement will be area of one bar divided by the area required multiplied by 1000 which is the unit width of the slab portion or the footing area of one bar for 12 mm is pi by 4 into 12 square upon AST required was 932 multiplied by 1000 so after solving we get the spacing as 121.24 mm let's assume it as 120 mm so basically we are providing 12 mm tall steel bars at 120 mm center to center distance in both directions so up till here we have calculated the bending moment acting on the footing and we also calculated the effective depth and the overall depth of the footing and uh, we also calculated the area of steel the tension steel which we have to provide uh, in both the directions so after this the next step would be to uh, determine whether the, whether the footing is safe in one way shear and two way shear and to check for development length and check for load transfer so we'll see the two way shear and one way shear in the next video and uh, please watch the next video thanks for watching this